47. When God Asks. April the 26th, 1955. Good morning, friends. There are times in our lives when God asks very difficult things of us. We are compelled to surrender loved ones, especially strong hopes, the fruit of our labours and other things which we have no heart to give up. We are all familiar with this kind of experience. Sometimes it seems as though life consists mainly of a process of taking away things from us until life itself goes. We lose youth and maturity and all the hopes associated with both. And sometimes the small things we comfort ourselves in are themselves taken away. Sometimes we are inclined to wonder and ask, why does God take so much from us? Why does he ask for so continual a sacrifice? The book of Exodus gives us a telling answer to the crying of our heart. In Exodus 19, we see Israel before Mount Sinai preparing itself for the renewal of the covenants made originally with Abraham. Up to this point, God has demonstrated his faithfulness. He took a slave people in Egypt and rescued them, destroying the power of Egypt. He led them miraculously across the Red Sea as on dry land, fed them with manna in the desert, and gave them water out of the rock. Only now does he make a demand of Israel. God declares, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. Exodus 19, 4 6. Herein, a remarkable fact concerning God's dealing with us is made apparent. Before God asks anything of us, He first of all gives us far more than we will ever ask for. We receive far more than we are ever required to give. In actuality, the whole process is one of continual enrichment. We are given to that we might give, and in the measure that we give humbly and in faith, the next demand is preceded by a richer gift. As our Lord pointed out, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6, 38 Instead, therefore, of viewing life as a continual taking away, we need to regard it instead as a continual investment by faith. We are asked to commit our whole life to God by faith and to yield our daily task to Him in trust, confident that our giving away of ourselves is an investment in God's Word. Our Lord declared that those who seek to save their own lives shall lose them, and those who lose them for the Lord's sake shall save them. The results of this investment will be revealed in eternity. Paul declared, We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. 2 Corinthians 5.10 The Greek text reads more accurately that on that day we shall receive back the works of our faith. It is not merely a receiving. It is a receiving back of our investment, now giving us a hundredfold and a thousandfold return. The answer to our heart's complaint, therefore, is that God asks because he has already given and will continue giving throughout all eternity. God gives us far more than we realize and often far more than we are able to receive and asks of us that we in return by faith invest in his faithfulness. In view of this, instead of complaining, we need to echo the praises of saints before us and raise the glad song. My God, how wonderful thou art, thy majesty how bright! How beautiful thy mercy seat in depths of burning light! F. W. Faber My God, how wonderful thou art! 1848